I just got hold of the early beta version of the Cadence blocks that includes the dynamic content function. This is all thanks to Adam from WP Crafter, so Adam, if you're watching this, Thank you. Stackable Blocks has already claimed number one when it comes to the dynamic content, but number one being the first on the market, it has nothing to do with the quality. I've already created a video on that which is right here, but don't go there yet, I've left a link in the description as well. Now it is really the race to number two. A lot of Gutenberg blog plugins have put dynamic content as their coming soon feature, and it seems Cadence Blocks could very well be the second on the market, and probably the best yet. But right now, it is still in the beta version, but I would say it is concrete enough to be in the live version. So this is the first look into the Cadence Blocks dynamic content. I've been waiting for this for far too long. And if you are still using the free Cadence Blocks, the dynamic content is going to give you another good reason to get the Cadence Blocks Pro. And if you decide to do that, I hope we can use this link. Anyway, before we get started, I hope you can smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. It means a lot to me and thank you so much if you have done that. You definitely want to stick around to the end because I'm going to show you a cool and awesome way to use the Cadence Dynamic Content if you're selling products on your website. So let's go. Hey, this is Jack and if this is your first time watching a video from my channel, I share a lot of WordPress tips and tutorials as well as affiliate marketing content. So if you want to learn any of these topics, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. My only goal is to share with you ways to save lots of money for your online business using WordPress. I don't use page builders and site speed is my main focus. And if you're running an online business and you're paying hundreds of dollars to make your website work, subscribe and you will become a money saving expert for your online business. Anyway, before we get started, I need to explain to you what dynamic content is and its common usage because without knowing that, what is the purpose of watching this video, right? Now, every website on the internet will have a database. If you are writing content and you save it, it will be stored on the database as a draft. And when you publish the content, it will be stored in the database as live. Then, for example, if you are selling products on your website, your customers will have entered some personal information like the name, address, credit card details, etc. That information will be stored on the database as well. So basically, whatever that is happening on your website will be stored on your site's database. Now, for example, if you are designing the customer account page of your website and you have hundreds of customers, do you create hundreds of pages on your website for each customer? No, right? If you do that, you will need to key in all the variables like the name, the product details, everything they bought, and whatever, one by one. And that's called static content. If you use dynamic content, all you need to do is to create one page on your website and using some codes, you draw each individual customer's information from the database and display it on that page. The process of drawing out information from the database to be displayed on your web page, it's called displaying dynamic content content. You wouldn't need to care much about this because WooCommerce has created a platform to help you draw that information from your database. But that's the general idea. Next, we need to talk about custom fields. To easily understand custom fields, it is basically a field that you create so that you can insert content to be stored on a database so that you can use it later on. I've actually done an example on this in another video about Stackable. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. To make this easy, dynamic content relies on the data that has been stored on your site's database. It is not plugged out of thin air. If there is nothing in your database, there is nothing for you to display. Simple as that. So with that, let's take a look at a side-by-side comparison between the dynamic content of Stackable and Cadence. I've installed both the Stackable Pro as well as the early beta of the Cadence blocks and when you write some tags on your WordPress editor, you will have these options. The one that looks like a globe is from Stackable and the one that looks like three cylinders are from Cadence blocks. Now again, this is an early beta version of Cadence blocks. It is not released to the public yet. I think it could be released by next week but for some of you who are watching this video a little later, it could have already been released. <laughs> 
stackable dynamic content looks like this. They are called dynamic views and to start with, you need to select a source to draw information from. You can draw information from the current post, from other posts, the site in general, or the latest posts. Basically, when you are doing this, you are trying to draw information from the source you have selected and you want to display it on the page that you are working on. When you select the current post as your source, you can draw the post title, URL, and all this from the current post. Honestly, I don't see a need for you to draw information from a current post because you are working on it. But what I think is useful is when you are designing templates for your website. I'll show you an example in a while, but for now, let's move on. So these are the contents you can draw from the current post. We have the post information, the author information, the comment, the featured image. Now this is not displaying the featured image though, it is just displaying the URL tags, like the HTTPS and the link address. I honestly don't think this is of any use unless you can display dynamic images but anyway this is the section where all the custom fields are found now these are custom fields that i've created when talking about stackable i've used a plugin called advanced custom view or acf in short to create this custom fields if you look at my wordpress editor i have this area where i can input all these values that will be displayed on the page template i've created again if you haven't checked that stackable video the link is in the description now when it comes to cadence's dynamic content it is structured a little differently. Yes, you still have all these standard post items, you have the archive items, the site and the author items. But what's different is that the custom fields are nested in the categories. So if I click on this post custom field, it will ask me where I should source the content. And then I can select the custom field I've created with ACF. I don't know about you, but I feel this is more organized. And they even have a custom input. I don't know how this custom input works right now, but my guess is it is going to replace ACF because you can create custom fields right here. But at this moment, I don't see how this can work. Now, something that I've discovered is that Cadence's dynamic content will only work if the content is published. Let me give you an example. If you use stackable blocks and you add a dynamic content, for example, this view, this top five benefits, benefit one, which is this view over here. If we put the value of this view as dynamic content, it's fetching this because previously it was this. We have to update this post before this will be displayed. Now, if we go to Cadence Blocks and we add the dynamic content from Cadence Blocks, we use the same field. Let's add dynamic content. Now, this post is already published, so you would see the values. Let me update this and let's view posts. So you can see this and this basically reflects this. Now, what if I switch this post to draft? And then we preview this in a new tab. You will see that for the stackable blocks, it will still be drawing information from that view. But for the cadence blocks, this view is left blank. This could be a bug or something. I don't think it is intended to be this way. I feel all content should be present even if it's in draft. So the cadence development team may want to take a look at this. Now let's list all the dynamic fields from both plugins and let's reduce them down to the unique ones so that we have a good look at their functionality. By looking at this overview, it seems like Stackable has more dynamic fields than the cadence blocks. But if you take a closer look at this, it seems that the Stackable blocks provides you with the dynamic author fields to customize your author pages. But the missing thing is the profile picture. For now, it only shows the link. And for the Cadence Blocks, there aren't many author fields. However, for Cadence Blocks, it provides you with the fields for you to customize your archive pages, such as the category pages and the block row. So each block plugin has a different focus. But there is one thing that sets the Cadence Blocks apart, and that is the fact that the dynamic content has been incorporated into some of the blocks from Cadence. Let me show you some examples. In the Advanced button by Cadence Blocks, you can add dynamic link to it. And in the info card, you can insert a dynamic link as well. I don't know about you, but to me, this is huge because I can now design templates and add buttons and info boxes to it. Let me show you one cool example on what you can do with this dynamic link. Now to make this quick, I will build on the example I've done with Stackable. So basically, in the video on Stackable, I've created five articles over here. And all these five articles are under the category of reviews. And over on the right, this is how they all look right now. As you can see, they all have different headers. 
But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick a bottom bar right here that includes a button with a dynamic link. So if somebody scrolls down this page, they will see a sticky bar at the bottom with a button that links to the affiliate product. So for example, on this page, if I scroll down, I want a button here that links to Atomic Blocks. And on a Cadence Blocks, I want a sticky bar at the bottom that links to Cadence Blocks. Same goes for Publish Press, Generate Blocks, and Stackable. And the reason for me doing this is because, you know, usually if you're on desktop, you can have a sticky sidebar. But if you're on a mobile, the sticky sidebar doesn't work anymore. And that's why I chose to have a sticky bottom bar. So five different pages promoting five different products. How do I do it? First, let's visit the back end of one of the articles. And as you can see here, these are advanced custom fields that I've created. So now I'm going to create two new custom fields for each of the review articles. Let's go to the WordPress dashboard. Over at the plugins, you need to make sure this advanced custom fields by Delicious Brains is installed. If you don't have this, you need to click on add new. And over at the search bar, search for advanced custom fields. And this is the one we need. So install this, and then let's go to custom fields here. Let's add new. Let's give this field group a name. Let's say that this is bottom bar affiliate button. Let's add field. The first field label, I will name it as product name. And I'll put this as text. And there's nothing else I will change. And then I'll add new. And this second field, I will put this as affiliate link. So on this field, we will insert the affiliate link for each of the products. And we'll put this as a link. And we'll switch this to link URL. Let's scroll down to the location. This location will basically set if this fields will be displayed here. So what we need to do is to select post category is equals to reviews because all these articles are under the category of reviews. And we're basically done. Let's publish this and let's go to the post. We already have atomic blocks open up. So let's open up the rest. And now we can see that there are two new fields over here. What I want to do is to insert values to these fields. So for the product name, I'll put this as Atomic Blocks. And for the affiliate link, I'll send them to Atomic Blocks. I'm just going to give you an example. You can put in your affiliate link here. It really doesn't matter. I just want to show you an example that when you click the button, it will go to Atomic Blocks. So let's check this box and add link. We are done for Atomic Blocks. Let's update this and let's go to Cadence. Let's do the same thing for the rest. And we are done. We have added values to all the custom fields. The next step is let's design the sticky bottom bar. So over on Pulse, we are working on a Cadence Pro team. If you are on teams such as Generate Press, Bloxy, or any other teams that allows you to add a fixed hook element, this will work as well. So under Appearance and under Cadence, we have these elements here. I'll click on this. I will add new. And because I want a sticky bottom bar that is fixed at the bottom, I'll click on Fixed. Let's give this a title. This title will not appear anywhere. This is just for your reference. Let's say this element is sticky bottom bar. Let's add a row layout. Let's select one column row layout and let's give this background a color. Let's say it is black color and let's add a button. Let's select advanced button. Let's give this a name, get. We want a product name here. So let's add this dynamic content. You have to click two times for this to appear. Let's select post custom view. And then we'll select product name, add dynamic content. And then after the dynamic content, it will be noun. So technically what you're going to see on each of the pages is going to be get atomic blocks now if you're on the atomic blocks article or get cadence blocks now if you're on a cadence blocks article. And then the next important thing is to add a dynamic link. So over here, let's click on this and then let's enable this. Let's go to post custom field and under the custom field, let's select affiliate link and we are done. But now let's beautify this button a little bit. We'll give the button a background color of yellow, something like this, and a border color as well. For the text color, we'll put this as black. And if we hover, we want the background color to be black. This looks quite decent. So we are basically done here. The next step we want to do is to tell your website where you want to stick this bottom bar. So let's go over to element settings and under placement, let's put this as fix bottom after scroll. And then for the display settings, let's select single post. For the post type, 
Let's select group and the taxonomy. We'll put this as categories and we'll select the reviews category because all these articles are under the review category. So let's update this. And as we refresh all these pages, if we scroll down, we'll see this here. Let's click this button to see if it brings us to atomic blocks. Let's do it for the rest while we wait. And as you can see, five different articles promoting five different affiliate products using one simple template over here. Personally, I think that a Cadence dynamic content once it is live is much better than stackable because it already has dynamic links that you can put into buttons and some other blocks. I've mentioned it in the stackable video that once you have control over the custom fields, dynamic links and images, it is going to be very powerful. And for Cadence, you are already in control of two out of the three. I have given you one example of what you can do with dynamic links and honestly, we are only scratching the surface of what we can do with it. What I would like to see in the future for Cadence blocks and dynamic content is probably a star rating function. For example, if I've written a product review post, I can easily add a star rating on the review post. And from there, if I want to display the rating of that product on another page, for example, I've written a listicle article with many other products, I can easily draw this review rating of each of the products through dynamic content and display it on the listicle article. That will be a huge asset to us as content creators because we don't need to flip here and there to reference the rating. If I happen to update the review post with a different rating, the rating on a listicle article would change as well. Other than that, I think the Cadence development team has done a really good job on this and I'm really excited for you to get your hands on the dynamic content from Cadence. If you haven't gotten the Cadence Blocks Pro yet and the team, I think it's a great time for you to get them. You can use my code to get a 10% discount through the link. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I would really appreciate if you can smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you think you have more ideas on how to use the dynamic content from Cadence Blocks, feel free to share them in the comment section as well. I wish you all the best, stay cool and stay safe.